Kevin is so good at looking at the camera lens. <laughs> Hello and welcome to This Thing Called Church. Today is Wednesday, December 15th, and today is episode number 15. And it's also the last episode that we will be filming in 2021. So hooray for that. I'm ready for 2021 <laughs> to be over. So that's yeah. fine with me. Yeah. Um, so Kevin <coughs> dressed for the occasion. He I thought we were dressing with ugly Christmas sweaters, but no one told me that was a joke. Well. So. I don't own one. Oh, yeah. Me either. My wife. And this is the last, <coughs> which Karen say it was the ugliest. <laughs> it's truly the ugliest. It was the, of the last ugliest. one at Kohl's last night. So, so you need to. It's kind of sad. We need to get a camera shot of it. I don't you know. Get this Here we go. This <laughs> <laughs> is important. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. And then yeah. I asked my wife. I said, "Hey, what's the?" She goes, oh, "That's a cat head." I said, "Oh, that's cool." And then <laughs> I'm not sure if Brian can hear that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's for you, David. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna wait till you were saying something deep and theological. Just <laughs> lean up on it. Well, now you're not gonna be able to turn it off. It's yeah. gonna just play. There we go. <laughs> just so. don't lean against the table. My daughter's really excited to, to co-op this for me. Mm. So. I bet. Did you name the cats? No. <laughs> I think it's Brian, <laughs> Karen, and David. <clears throat> Funny. You go. They're loud and annoying. <clears throat> so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is that our new uniform? Yeah, that's our new uniform. <laughs> also wanted the green screen today, so that we just <laughs> float. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, thanks for telling me it was a joke. Not telling me it was a joke to wear ugly Christmas sweater. I appreciate your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and your dedication to... To the craft. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But did you notice, Karen, last night when I texted this, she's like, I don't own anything ugly. Mm -hmm. Like, not a thing. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I noticed that, too. I knew you were going to take it that way. <laughs> I sent a photo of what I was going to wear, but I couldn't. I couldn't find it. I know. Mm -hmm. so. I'll I'll see if I can get it for you. Yeah. yeah. If you promise on tape to to wear it, someone's getting called. Oh, yeah, that's I'm you. Called. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Well, and uh, and not to spend a lot of time on this, but it's <laughs> <laughs> we already have. <laughs> I know. <laughs> With that sweater, then today when I just happened to Google National Day. Oh man. I see that. <clears throat> it's National Cat Herders Day. Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> no, it gets better. Because <laughs> <laughs> this show is so deep. Cat Herders Day on December 15th recognizes those who li whose life or job is like herding cats. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. They seem cute, adorable, and innocent. How much trouble can they cause? In general, <laughs> when describing our lives or our jobs, are they that difficult? No matter how organized we try to be, little kitties get away. <laughs> While we are focused on bringing three or four tasks into line, another spills the milk or creates an avalanche of problems. Before we know it, chaos ensues. In the employment world, we might describe a challenging position or one tough to keep filled like herding cats. Jobs that might fit that description may include Okay, they're stupid. Okay. Um, Choir director's on there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so many jobs can be like herding cats. Do you know someone who has a job like this? <laughs> Give them a shout out. If you have a job like, like, like that's herding cats, share with us using Cat Herders Day to post on social media. I can't wait till next December, is it the 15th? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, December 15th. So I can buy you an appropriate gift. Thank you. <laughs> Clearly, yeah, I'm for cat herders. Cat day. herders for any day. day. Yeah. You could use this for your sermon, right? There's <clears throat> sermon material mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> we we kept a friend, a good friend's cat for a week while she was out of town on business, and she's a sweet little kitten. She's I don't know how old she is. Not very old. Willow. Her name is oh, Willow. Oh, cute. But she's like a terrible toddler. Mm. Like we've had cats, and they've all been great. And um, uh, and. You could sort of get them to do stuff and not do stuff, but you know they're cats; they're not like dogs. Mm. But Willow would; she'd walk over to the tree and you know, like she's going to touch it. Willow. No, and then she'd look at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you're 
Yeah, it's serious. <laughs> she would. She's a cat. That's oh, her attitude. She terrible. <laughs> Swat thing. <laughs> and then just like, like, I'm doing it. And you can't do anything about it. And I'm too cute for you to, like, hurt me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So I would love to have seen that. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's something else. Mm. Okay. Well, we. So I feel I feel for you, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> you and all. On Sunday, you when you see all, all those choirs and for lessons oh, and carols, yeah. you'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, especially this Sunday. Yeah. Definitely like herding cats. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so our topic for today is incarnation, and it's a big deal. And when I was doing research on it, I was like, oh, this is really deep. Like, mm. well, not, it's, I mean, it's kind of deep, but there's a lot to it. Like, and there's like, there were all these, yeah, articles and things that I was reading up on, but they basically say the same thing. Yeah. Um, why don't you start telling us basically what it means and why it's important. And what? then. <laughs> why do I have to start? Because <laughs> then he'll transition <laughs> into this part, <laughs> trying to keep it balanced. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to, but. He wants no, to. I'll start. <laughs> okay. I'll start. Well, it's, um, so you can imagine the, you know, the word in, it com- incarnate mm-hmm. to be enfleshed. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially what it means. Um, it's a little weird and gross when you think about it. it yeah. I mean, it's, but um, just the idea of something being enfleshed, mm-hmm. uh, taking on flesh. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, um, it, it is the, it's, it's our celebration of the um, coming of God into the world in Jesus of Nazareth in the flesh, um, the Feast of the Nativity, Christmas, however we think about it. Um, and like Easter, um, where of course, where we celebrate the resurrection, um, this, the church really early on had to settle what it believed happened in Christ. Like, so, um, was Jesus really human, mm-hmm. or did he just seem to be human? You know, in other words, almost like a God t- was a shape shifter and sort of mm-hmm. took the shape of a human, but really wasn't human. Did he really die, or, or mm-hmm. was that just sort of a, you know, um, again, God just kind of looking like, taking the form of someone who looks like they died, but we know gods don't die, so God really didn't. Hmm. Um, was Jesus really God, like the presence of the fullness of God, or was he a human who point simply pointed to to God? So the church really early on, and then there are a whole other. Um, there's a, as you discovered, Karen. There's a lot of conversation about it, and a lot of ink spilled over the debates. But early on, the church had to decide what it believed. Um, uh, what the Orthodox teaching of the church would be around what happened in Jesus. And it matters because if Jesus is the one who saves, um, then Jesus must be God, because mm-hmm. God is the only one we believe who can save. Um, so therefore, Jesus must have been God. Or we're claiming something and someone else can save us. Um, if... Um, if Jesus doesn't assume our full humanity, then we're not, the other side of that is, then we're not fully, our full humanity is not redeemed. Maybe only a part of us. So the church, early church believed pretty quickly, no, we're, Christ assumed our full humanity. God saved, saved all of us. Body, mind, heart, soul. God saved it all. And so the church, can I borrow the hymnal, sure, Kevin? Um, so the, the church pretty early on in the Council of Nicaea, um, and sometimes we say the Nicene Creed, not, not all the time because it's the longer one, but it was the church's baptismal creed for, um, for a long, you know, for, and it still is in some traditions. But we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made. So in other words, the Word is not created. The Word's not a part of creation. Um, the eternal logos of God existed from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, 
of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. So that, that sort of claims the divinity of Christ. And then you get into, for us and for our salvation, he came, came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. And so the creed claims both the divinity and the humanity of Christ in you know, about six or eight lines. Um, because, again, God saves, and it's our full humanity that is redeemed in Christ. So um, we believe, unlike any other tradition, that God was enfleshed mm -hmm. in a human being, lived a life like ours, and died a death like ours. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you had asked, like last year or two years ago, you had this big debate with a group of your colleagues, I think, about mm -hmm. if Jesus hit his <coughs> finger with a hammer, would he, would he cry? <coughs> yes. Or would he be in pain? Or, right. You know. And I think he would. <coughs> right. Because he was fully human. Mm -hmm. Right. So and this, he was like, fully human. David gave a really accurate de demonstration or uh, summary of it, but it was really contentious. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. there's another hymn in our hymnal um, of the Father's Love Begotten. Mm -hmm. That goes through. It was really written for this council, and people mm -hmm. were getting beat up on Fist the road to <laughs> this council. Fist fights. Fist what? fights. Saint like, Nicholas. Yeah, Saint Nicholas. You know, Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. So people were going like on the road to this council, and like opposing forces were like knocking people off their horses and beating <gasps> them up just to prevent them from coming to the and being able to vote. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. It was oh a big my deal. Gosh. It's, you know, now we just, oh, that we say the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed every week and blah, blah, blah. But it was really kind of explosive, you know. Wow. It was, you know, intense. Yeah. Yeah. So that what we, I mean, they, they rightly, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be an advocate for the fist fights over doctrine, but, um, but they rightly understood that, the, that it is a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. what we believe and teach about Jesus really does matter. Um, it's not just sort of some side thing that the church can, you know, people in the church who are interested in doctrine can talk about that over here. But no, it really shapes, belief shapes practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so right belief shapes right practice. And um, it matters what we teach and believe about Jesus. And the um, opposite is true. What you practice <coughs> underlies mm -hmm. what you really believe. Mm -hmm. So I can say I believe this, but if I act a different way, do <coughs> I mean, in fact really believe that? So, anyway. Yeah. I just want to talk about fist fights. Really <laughs> it's like an action movie. St. Nicholas superhero. It's Punched marble. him right in the nose. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And what time period was this? This was in the, well, the Council of Nicaea was, uh, or it was, what, 380 yes. something? Yeah. yeah. Early fourth, late fourth century. So, for, for, um, probably three, well, a little bit longer than that, three or four hundred years there. Till I don't know, five six hundred, the church kind of settled all of those, the Trinitarian and the um, Christological debates. Hmm. Those were the big ones. The, what we believe about the Trinity, what we believe about God, mm -hmm. um, and then Christology, what we believe and teach about Christ, mm -hmm. the person and work of Christ. Um, is that what the Orthodox Church split off to? Oh, that was more with the. Holy that was a, that was then the like Holy around a thousand eleven hundred. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, that. They were in that debate, but that was later on. And how many? How long did it take them? How many years do you think to iron that out? A few hundred years to figure it to all sort out. Sort it all out. Okay, because yeah. yeah. I'm thinking like if we had to today's world had to figure all this out, yeah. like it would be. It, I don't think we would ever resolve it. Mm. Well, I mean, look how yeah. long <laughs> it takes General Conference to do anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. Kind of is the same. <laughs> right. Really. It's just kind of. You play out on social media this time. Right. You know, maybe sharing articles. And right. Yeah. And yeah. opinions and mm. not. Mm -hmm. Good grief. Wow. Um, and so that is, is that the only time that it happens in the Bible? I read something and I didn't dig deeper, but something about a fish. Was there a fish? I have no idea. Okay, never mind. I'm drawing a blank. All Probably. Right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say there's other instances of incarnation. So, like, God comes down and walks right. in the garden with Adam and Eve. There okay. are other times where God is with us, but not in this sort of incarnation. Not in the human yeah. flesh. Yeah. 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 Okay, obviously. Other anthropomorphisms where... What he said. God, yeah. That's yeah. why he answers first. That's why you answer <laughs> first. <laughs> well, there are other places where God manif is present. Right. In a way that seems very personal and tangible and yeah. and human. Right. 
Which is one of the reasons I think the church really has had a hard time during COVID because we are this incarnational experience. Mm-hmm. And when you can't be together, we had to learn how to create that in different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's you know why it's so good. I think when people are coming right now, with the you know, we've got a lot more people coming back to church. Everybody's walking out saying, "Wow, that feels good because yeah. we're together again." Right. Yeah. yeah. One of the things the incarnation teaches, I mean, one, or the one of the sort of, um, I guess the um, results of incarnation is what Kevin said about the body really matters, like the body of Christ, the gathered church, the the enfleshed community of faith really matters. Our, our faith is so that you know, we talked about Gnosticism a little bit when we talked about the Trinity. Um, and this is all an oversimplification of a very complex um, conversation. But, you know, ours is not a, a kind of intellectual, it is an intellectual faith, but it's God is not an idea to which we must ascend or, or about which we must agree. God is a person. And so much so that God became a person a particular person in a particular time and place. So particularity matters. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus' Jewishness really matters. You know, if it, um, it, when you forget Jesus' Jewishness, you end up with a Holocaust, mm-hmm. right? When mm-hmm. you forget the particularities about mm-hmm. Christ, you end up, the church ends up behaving. So doctrine, again, when you forget the doctrine, you end up with behavior that can be really violent and damaging and unfaithful. So... Um, so Christ's particular ma- particularity matters, and therefore it matters that the church shows up in a particular time and place. Mm-hmm. You you really can't be a part of the church. With, I'm getting trouble for this, but you really can't be a part of the church without being a part of fully and completely. Right. Doesn't mean God doesn't love you, and you. Tr- that's right. a, another. But to to truly be a part of the church means you are committed to living that out in some particular space, physical mm-hmm. space, with other people, mm-hmm. right? That mm-hmm. you're going to, the church is always enfleshed. Um, and that's hard. It's messy. It's not easy. We get on each other's nerves. We make mistakes. We hurt each other. We do dumb things. But that's... <laughs> you look at me you said dumb things. <laughs> you look at me. We do dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> We do do dumb things, though. Sure. But yeah. um, the other thing that it m- means is that other people's bodies matter. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. all bodies matter to mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. because God took on a body, which means uh, things like how we treat our neighbor's bodies really matter. Um, when they're hungry, when they're um, fleeing their home because of violence, when they're afraid, when they're lonely, when they're sick, when they're imprisoned, their bodies matter mm-hmm. to God. It's not just their spirit. Right. Um, <clears throat> in other words, you know, we're not just a, it's not about getting your spirit to go to heaven. No, we believe in, the, if we go on in the creed, the resurrection of the body. body. Yeah. They matter so much that one day, the way God raised Jesus' body from the dead, God will raise our bodies. Wow. So, That's yeah. That's really deep. It is really I mean, there's deep. a lot, yeah. There's a lot in there. How many courses did you have to, like, go mm. through? Just, I don't know. Really? A few. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites was, my, my absolute favorite class in seminary probably was uh, Dr. Willie Jennings. Um, teaches at Yale. I believe he's at Yale now. Um, a course on the person and work of Christ. It, mm. it transformed my oh, wow. thinking and ministry. And, um, and it is important because what, and even on the board of ordained ministry, there's a, if you want to be a mm-hmm. ordained pastor in the Methodist Church, there's a whole question. Yeah that you have to write about the person and work of Jesus. Yeah. But having said that about mm-hmm. doctrine mattering, mm-hmm. and uh, me and Kevin talking about passing board or you know exams and all right. that, um, we're, God doesn't love us because we get this exactly right. 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 I want to be clear about that. Mm-hmm. Like what we do teach matters. Getting it right matters. We want it to be faithful teaching. But there's, this is not a test. God's not somewhere saying, well, unless you get the incarnation right, right I don't really love and care about you. Right. That's, or you have to do that to pass to get in. That's not, that's not true. It's, I really love Anselm's way of thinking about it was it's faith seeking understanding. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you know, we have faith mm-hmm. and we're always, that faith leads us to always mm-hmm. seek a deeper understanding of who God is and who we are in relation to God. Yeah, and I find like you just, it just gets, like you just keep getting deeper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you just you could keep getting deep and deep and deep. Like there's no end to how 
It's like the universe. Yeah. The it, mysteries yeah. just... Yeah. I mean, there's expansive. so many levels of it, which is, is yep. just fascinating. But I think sometimes the humanity of Jesus will hurt. Like, we don't really... Sometimes we don't really want to think about that. Right. I don't, maybe on your time on the board mm. you saw that. The people that would want to emphasize yeah. the divinity over the humanity. But it, it's not like there's a d d divine side and a human side coexisting. Right. It's all like the Trinity wrapped up right. together. <laughs> but there's a lot of times when I read these papers for the ordinance that you can tell they're troubled by the humanity of Jesus. They don't want to think of Jesus, you know, getting dysentery or, you know, hurting himself when he, they want this triumphant Jesus always there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know if you've felt that way in your mm -hmm. own life. Like, yeah, ooh, no, I think that's true. a wounded Jesus is really hard, but that's what we, you know, it's in our St. Stained Glass window of the church. Yeah, yeah. And that's a human mm -hmm. Jesus right up there. Right. So. Yeah, it's um, the weakness and vulnerability of God are uh, make us sometimes uncomfortable. I think Americans in particular want a, want a heroic, horse-riding, sword-wielding yeah. God who's, you know, untouched by the stuff that disturbs right. us. Um, but that's not the God we get. The God we get was a baby, had to be fed, <laughs> mm -hmm. had to have his diapers changed, right. mm. um, needed his mom and dad till you know till he could live on his own. Mm -hmm. um, was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. right. Would have died if not you know if somebody hadn't taken care of him. Mm -hmm. That's the God we get. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know the one that's poor and homeless and uh, ends up dying on a cross, mm. kind of unknown mm -hmm. to the to the world and. Um, uh, and that, you know, that says something then about um, who God, I think, cares for and um, who um, we're called to care for. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, and it even goes back to your Sunday sermon a little bit, which hit home when you were talking about being blessed and what we think being blessed means, you know, having yeah. good health and having a house and the Christmas mm. and all of this perfect stuff, but that's not really being blessed. No. It's not the version that, yeah, and I, I've, been, I've been wrapping no. my head around that one. Yeah, that's not Mary's blessedness. No. no. Hers was quite difficult. Yeah. <laughs> hey, right. you're a teenage mom, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. people are going to hate him and try to kill him. And you're blessed. And you're blessed. <laughs> 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Publisher's Clearinghouse. Yeah. Uh, you won. Yeah. Um, okay, so how does this tie in? Sure. So this, I, I just brought this in because I wanted to make sure I didn't forget this. It's one of our favorite Christmas carols. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, 240 in your hymnal. Charles Wesley wrote this in the, in the middle of the 17th, uh, sorry, 18th century. And the actual, we say it, and maybe perhaps we kind of blow by it in the beautiful time of Christmas, but we sing, Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. So we, we sing it, and we, like mm -hmm. you said, in the Creed, even the Apostles' Creed, right. we talk yeah. about yeah. this every week. And so much of this is just paying attention to what we're saying and saying we believe. Right. There, um, that's more, that may be the best Christological hymn in the hymnal. And there are some good ones, but that one's pretty. Spe I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. There, um, I think that maybe more than any other time of the year, carols and hymns. <laughs> don't get don't get them on that one again. <laughs> but uh, they they are, and the we for the Wesleys, this was always true. Um, they're a way of singing our faith, faith singing our theology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. They're a way to teach. Mm -hmm. You know, if we pay attention to it mm -hmm. and don't just rush through the words. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. I mean, you'll do a lot of that on Sunday, this coming Sunday. So I, I didn't know this. My daughter and I are sharing music back and forth. Now we're at that time in her life, and there is a singer called Phoebe Bridgers. I don't know if you've heard of her. Have you heard of her? Mm -mm. Okay. So she released this tune called "Silent Night, Seven O'clock News," and I'd <laughs> never heard it. But so I shared it with my daughter, and then she got the card, and she's like, "Hey, you know that was a Simon and Garfunkel tune." What? So while they're singing "Silent Night," you hear this seven o'clock news thing going on, yeah. and it's really, really quite honestly. Um, it was just making me think of this when you're talking about singing it, paying attention. Mm. But they, she, Phoebe Bridgers has updated it now with news from like right now. Mm. So while silent, it's almost disorienting and, and up, upsetting because you can't listen mm. to the beauty of the silent night, all is calm, yeah. all is bright. Yeah. And they're saying there's enough, you know, troubles in Afghanistan and, and that kind of stuff. Right. So it's really interesting. Right. Uh, I didn't realize it was a Simon and Garfunkel song. I was mm. happy she taught me that. Was it Silent Night written, isn't it a World War I? Um, I don't know 
know about that. I know it was no, it was in the 1800s. Okay. Um, Maybe when the organ was broken. Oh, okay. Oh. So it was actually performed originally on guitar. So. Oh. Yeah. In Austria. Huh. You, maybe you're thinking about... Well, what am I thinking about? Well, there's I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day was a Civil War yeah, tune. Yeah, yeah, um, And that's a very powerful text. Um, when we were fighting the Civil War, and those, uh, God is dead, or there is no peace, or something like that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the... One of the later verses. Um, so. Hmm. But we'll sing our faith on Sunday. Yeah. Yes. One of my favorite ser- uh, services. No offense, I know there's, yeah, there's no sermon. No sermon. <laughs> there yeah. is a sermon, it's just different. Yeah, there proclaimed. is a different sermon. That's right. The word will be read and proclaimed. It will be. And the congregation will do a lot of the proclaiming. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be gonna great this year. Together. We've rented a stage and we've got youth, children, and adults, bells, instrumental ensemble. It's really mm-hmm. a very kingdom of God moment where we're kind of seeing this whole experience of yeah. who we are as a church. So Right. Yeah. And having all the different ages yeah. worship together and sing is beautiful. I have a question for you. This kind of is off topic a little bit. Like you, like last Sunday was gorgeous. All Saints, rec- you know, you and every Sunday the music is sure. pretty too. <laughs> okay, but my question is for you, like for me when I'm sitting in church and I listen to the sermon and hear this amazing music, you you know I have those moments where you you feel you feel the presence you just you feel like you're in worship you feel like you are you know praising God and all that but you're working it so how do you how, where do you get your experience like how do you yeah. like how do you because you're in church every Sunday but you're working mm-hmm. so how do you how it's a weird. It doesn't happen all the time. I, that's the sad thing. Right, because you're working. we have two services now, so mm-hmm. I can kind of pick up a moment here, you know. Like during the Magnificat, like I was... You're working. I was working really hard. Right, so, right. But when I sit down, I do have that moment of like, oh, I remember when we started this in August, and okay. I can see God's work and bringing, you know, the choir in the balcony and downstairs and these brass... We didn't have a dress rehearsal. We did a dress rehearsal on Sunday morning at right. 7.45 and did yeah. it at 9. Because we couldn't get everybody together. It was just yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and that's one of those things I keep telling everybody. That's, that's COVID Kevin. Because Kevin 10 years ago would have had a nervous breakdown. Yeah. But I was like, eh. It's fine. <laughs> but it worked out great. They're great players, musicians that uh, sing and, and play instruments. And Brian's digital ministries team did a great job of oh, yeah. representing what was going on in the room. Yeah. And so it was a wonderful experience. But yeah, I pick up here little bits here and there. Sermon, even, yeah. honestly. Sermon. Yeah. I can usually quote the sermon back to the preacher at the end of the, the day. That's, That's good. frightening. <laughs> and then remind them of stu- <laughs> stupid stories two months later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it is. I mean, and this Sunday will be beautiful as well. But you're going to be like it's one of my favorite working days. it. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. It is. Oh, my God. When they do still, still, still. Like, I cry every time. I get to oh pretend I'm at Christ God. Church uh, at oh Oxford. Oh, yeah, at Oxford, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's that King's College. King's College, King's College yeah. Is, That's okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to okay read too. in my best Monty Python voice. And stuff. <laughs> like Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're greeting the incarnation story narrative. That's your, yeah, you're doing oh. the ninth lesson. Mm-hmm. St. John unfolds John, the great mystery of the incarnation. John 1. So if anybody right. wants to... Study read, ahead? Read, yeah, study ahead. Read John 1. It kind of sounds like Monty Python sometimes. The word was this, and it it's was not It's a lot this. of words. It's a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. So some, it uh, makes me giggle. John worked, John's Greek was pretty complex. Yeah. He, he, he squeezed it, a lot of words. It does sound like what they do with the holy hand grenade. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was not this, but it was this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. God. It's hard to talk about. Sometimes yeah. it's easier to say what it's not than what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, That's and, true. Um, which is a tradition in theology to talk about what isn't and yeah. more than what is. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mystery. Yeah. Is one of the central. And that's that's one. Of the, it's one of the central mysteries of our faith, mm-hmm. not in the sense of like a puzzle to figure out, but just mm-hmm. something that's been revealed. Yeah, and is un, you know, the the our understanding of that is unfolding. Awesome, and I love that you know the incarnation kind of plays out even in the sacrament of Holy Communion, and then like mm-hmm. you said, the resurrection. Yeah. Like the incarnation just isn't this one thing that happened and we're done with it. It plays out. You know, we're reflections right. of that too. So. Yeah. Mm. Good way to wrap it up. Wow, could you go, Mr. Dr. Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor that can help anybody, so that's okay. <laughs> I had to wave my arms. Uh, 
So this Sunday we've got lessons and mm -hmm. carols, which will be gorgeous in the morning. And mm -hmm. then at seven o'clock in the chapel, we have our hope and healing service, which will be beautiful as well. And we have Mark Miller mm -hmm. and Scott Peters. And I, there's a choir too. Mm -hmm. The Scola group, the young Scola. adult group. I don't mm -hmm. think you've heard them yet. No, I don't think so. They've, oh, wow. We haven't had a chance to get them back into worship for a long time. Wow. And in the initial days of COVID, they were the ones that came to, mm -hmm. to lead. I hate to yeah. say it, they were like our COVID choir. They were our COVID. We joked about it. Then people, yeah, we that, felt bad about calling them COVID choir. But, but they were the people that right, came. Could come. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. could yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pre-recorded things and they would yeah. just come and sing those things. Yeah. So we have that on Sunday night. And then I'm still struggling that Christmas is next week. Yeah. Like I still feel like it's three weeks, month away. No. And it's literally next it's week. It's like nine days. Oh, Something no. Something like that. Well, ten. 10. Yeah. yeah, today's 15th. <laughs> if, she corrected you. If we're being mm -hmm. He's counting to Christmas Eve. Right. Which is yeah. what we have all these countdown <laughs> calendars in our house. And I'm like, yeah. no, it's not. <laughs> and so he's like, we're talking about Christmas Day. I'm counting to when I have to show up and it's not a Sunday. Yes. That's right. <laughs> so I don't forget. Yeah. And so Christmas Eve, we mm -hmm. will have a 1 o'clock, a 3 o'clock, a 5 o'clock, a 7 o'clock, and 11. Yep. Um, and the 5 o'clock will be live streamed. Mm -hmm. um, the three, no, the five and seven are basically the same service. Mm -hmm. um, the five is usually the busy one. Yes. So Pre-COVID times, busiest. that was, that was mm -hmm. the busiest. Um, the 11 o'clock will serve communion, and that one is more youth-led. Mm -hmm. um, youth and alumni. Yep, and that one's really pretty, too. They're, they're all pretty. Sure. They really are. Um, and then the one and three, does that feature the children's choir? The three o'clock is the children's choir. One o'clock okay. is sort of a more pared down one with Virginia and I doing that, musically oh, speaking. Oh, okay. But David's preaching at all of them. Ooh. Yeah. And we will have all overflow five. available for people that, you know, if you walk in and there's 500 people in the sanctuary, you can go to the fellowship hall. Right. Yeah. right. And then we have Christmas Day. Yeah. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. After I'll you're done. This. After you. <laughs> yep. No, I won't. <laughs> And the, you know, the people have been asking me, like, why are you doing this? But like, you, I don't celebrate your the day before your birthday. We, right. we celebrate it's like your Easter. birthday. It be, it, to me, it's, I've always thought it's like not coming to church on Easter. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. having worship on Easter. It really is the most important yeah. day. It's, it's one of the two most important, significant days. Right. You can't have Easter without the incarnation. Right. So... So come on Christmas morning. I 9 agree. I think it'll, it's it'll be, It won't be a long service, maybe 30, 40 minutes. Uh, we'll have communion together, a brief little message, some music. It'll be beautiful. And then if, we'll be right back the next day. <laughs> For <laughs> more. Sunday the 26th. A uh, normal Sunday. Then, yeah. Well, it'll be a little different. Yeah, it will be a little different, but 9 and 11. We'll just and, let you figure it out yeah. oh. when you get there. Oh. Yeah. But it'll be good. Good to be in yeah. worship. And then we're off to the new year. Gosh. And uh, book Tiffany. study coming up in January. I don't want to um, get ahead of ourselves too much, but that's coming up at the end of January. So watch the bulletin, the e-news, mm -hmm. the website, the scrolling announcements on Sunday morning for updates about all that. Yep. So Awesome. Oh, can I give a shout out to the to the mug? Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So shout out to the uh, Shut family. Oh. And um, this was made by uh, one of their friends who is the elementary art teacher at uh, Community School of Davidson. Oh, so, no That's I yeah, figured that was beautiful. like a Boone mug or no, something. No, this is it. It's is beautiful. Is it wow. on the bottom? Is there anything? Uh, yeah, I think she, Just, she signed, signed it. She or he signed it on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's my color scheme. I love yeah. those your aesthetic. That's your aesthetic. It is. Yeah, I love blues. So that, that yeah. would fit in my house. Yeah, so thanks to the <laughs> Shutt family for that and to the artist. Wonderful. I'm sorry. I didn't even ask about it because I just thought it was like your standard mug. No. Nope. Got to do it. Yep. Nope. Awesome. Well, thank you for shouting that out. Yeah. All right. So we'll get through these holidays next nine days and then it's or coming. 11 days for you guys. And we'll be back in 2022. Thank you to everybody who has... Um, followed along with us this year. We appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you guys next year. Take care. <laughs> oh, you know what I just realized? <laughs> it hits it. <laughs> so if I leave the table out, somebody's talking, it'll just go off. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell David just while he's talking, just <laughs> quietly lean forward. <laughs> I get in your I jacket. I need some Velcro. <laughs>
Just yeah. wait. <laughs> it's gonna be legendary. <laughs> yeah, but I look this way. <laughs> camera. Which camera is that? I'd say that would this, be one. Is this one. That's two. No. No, that's two. one. No, I would say one, two, three. Oh, okay. One. No, one. Is that one? No, that's three. That's three? Mm -hmm. Are you a left or our left? Okay. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I was wrong. You were right. I was wrong. <gasps> Please tell me you're recording. Karen just told me I was right and she was wrong. Please. <laughs> I want to keep that. That's my Christmas present from you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs>